<laughs> so hi everybody and welcome to that live show with uh, uh, Robert and Elizabeth tonight. It's a, it's a great opportunity um, because we have been live with Robert before and we were sharing content around the program that will be happening in Nice on the 7th, 8th and 9th of October around conscious leadership. And today it's not just about sharing content, it's about you having answers to your questions. So I think it's a, a pretty huge opportunity to have uh, Robert answering what you want to know more about conscious leadership. So uh, hi, Robert. Hello. <laughs> it's good no. to be here. And hi, Elizabeth. And thank you, Robert, for uh, spending this moment with us. We're, I think this, it's a, a, great, a great moment because, again, it's not about sharing content. It's about really being live with what's coming. And uh, before we have some questions, um, we, we wanted uh, maybe to, to start with a question around what is the difference between a manager and a leader to you? Yes, just I just want to point out uh, when I'm, I'm when I'm looking, I only see a small picture of you and then everything else. I, I don't see and I'll, I'll stop the sharing and uh, you. Yeah, I think that's we, maybe be best to do we, just we, so we, that we can see everybody. Yeah. Donc, nous allons commencer par la question, quelle est la différence entre un manager et un leader? Well, and I, and I think the key here is that, you know, a, a manager manages what is. A manager takes, you know, what already exists and tries to, you know, keep it steady or incrementally improve it. Whereas a leader has to take it to somewhere new. We have to go somewhere that is different and, and that is, you know, potentially risky as well as, you know, has a big reward. Donc, un manager, effectivement, va intervenir avec ce qui est, avec ce qui existe déjà, là où un leader doit amener euh, l'ensemble à un prochain niveau. And, and I, I think, you know, clearly, uh, we, we, the qualities that we associate with a leader are things like, like vision, like courage, like determination, uh, you know, and, and with a sense of, a, a big sense of mission and ambition. Whereas the qualities you tend to associate with a manager are more like stability, you know, they're trying to keep things um, uh, going in a, in, a, in, in a good way, obviously, but they're not particularly trying to take it somewhere new or somewhere more. Hmm. Un manager va avancer avec de la stabilité, ne va pas essayer d'amener quelque chose, d'amener à quelque chose de nouveau, là où un leader va euh, intervenir avec une notion de vision, d'ambition, d'amener de, de, l'ensemble vers quelque chose de nouveau. Hmm. Hmm. Ok, hmm. ok. And so, what we were also wondering with Elizabeth, is there a feminine side of leadership and a masculine side of leadership? How do you, do you see that? Sure. I think there's a feminine and a masculine side of everything. There's a yin and a yang in, in everything. Um, and, and typically, uh, you know, and, and, and masculine and feminine does not have to be either uh, in, a, in a singly, in a male or a female, uh, like, just like yin and yang. Uh, the feminine side is more, uh, it's, it's more receptive, it's more, you know, nurturing. The masculine side is more about taking action and about going in a specific direction. And so just like we all need, you know, this, this, a mother and a father energy, um, I think that's similar to what we need in, in leaders. Um, and it's best when we can balance them both in ourselves Where, where we can be, you know, again, visionary and determined, but also where we can be, uh, you know, emotionally intelligent and, and, and also, uh, you know, welcoming and nurturing. Mm. Donc, effectivement, est-ce qu'il y a un leadership masculin, un leadership féminin L'idée, c'est qu'effectivement, il y a du masculin et du féminin dans chacun de nous, dans chaque partie, et ça n'a pas à voir uniquement avec un aspect homme et femme. C'est mm. l'idée globale, c'est d'avancer avec de l'intelligence euh, émotionnelle. Mm. Mm. And so, what, what would be like uh, an expression of a feminine kind of 
feminine behavior as a leader that you would be that would be at the core of the feminine leadership well again if you think of of the qualities that we would call uh yin you know yin is more it's open it's inviting mm. it's uh, curious it's receptive it's wanting to engage people and involve people it's more relationship oriented whereas the masculine side is more task oriented mm. uh, so you know that, that's probably the simplest way to you know characterize the, the feminine and masculine forms of leadership uh, uh, an emphasis on relationship uh, versus an, an emphasis on task mm. donc la dimension masculine est plus orientée vers la tâche et la dimension féminine plus vers uh, la, la réception l'émotion So, because I think this question is, is really important because we say that the next step of leadership is feminine because the, the conscious leadership and, and the next, the, the upcoming world needs more of the feminine side of leadership. What, 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 how, what is your stand around that? Well, just this idea that um, if, if we take that, that sort of basic you know, balance between task and relationship, We're saying that, you know, relationship is is key, and, and part of the reason that it's so key is that, um, you know, uh, the the future is going to be a function of our ability to work and act uh, collectively and in mm -hmm. relationship. So you know, the, the the sort of masculine side, the task side, the yang side is more about technology. The mm -hmm. yin side is more about people it's about collective it's about you know um wholeness and and uh connection mm. so i think a big big challenge of what's happened in our world is we've gone way way into the sort of more technology side mm. and we really need that that uh human side so we used to say in the 1960s high tech high touch and uh wow. you need you need both you know the feminine side is more uh, it's more somatic as we said it's more emotionally intelligent and that's going to be necessary to have truly uh high performing um and you know generative teams mm. donc l'idée pour le futur effectivement c'est que nous avons intérêt à, à, à relier les deux la dimension euh, technologique la dimension euh, relationnelle um, pour amener les, les, les équipes euh, dans une part de l'intelligence collective. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And, um, and maybe just before uh, Elisabeth goes with her a question, uh, can, you, can you share with us one of the tools that we may learn during the program that, that will enhance that feminine side of us that, that we need more of? Well, yeah, sure. I mean, a, a, a big part of that, as I was saying, relates to the emotional intelligence of a conscious leader and mm. our ability to to welcome um, everything that's there. So, uh, you know, one of uh, we'll be working with tools relating to things like being able to be in a in a centered but receptive state. We're going to be working with tools that allow us to um, bring in to a, a group, a lot of different perspectives um, and, and hold them from a place of, you know, curiosity and, and you know, caring, if you will. And that's where really a, a lot of the most important ideas um, emerge. Mm. So we'll be, we'll be working with, you know, how do we be with difference and with uh, difficult feelings, but also how do we Um, make stronger sense of resonance and connection between mm -hmm. ourselves and others. And, and there will be, again, specific practices and tools that we, we present to work with that. Donc, effectivement, durant le cursus, nous allons pratiquer différents outils, différents, nous allons avoir différentes pratiques pour euh, éveiller ou comment dire, améliorer cette dimension féminine de relationnel, etc. Mm. Okay. 
Um, we already received some questions from, from leaders, from managers. And for example, one of these questions is, um, it's a company in the service sector in the maintenance cleaning. And the question is, we, have, we had to innovate overnight in a hurry, so not to, not to lose our customers. Um, how to keep this dynamic of innovation, this creativity of the employees in times when, when there is less urgency? And is that possible? Sure, of course, of course it's possible. Uh, and we see the most successful companies do that. They don't wait for a crisis to innovate and especially to do this kind of disruptive innovation. And clearly, uh, this, it's, this is where leadership comes in, you know. Um, if, if there's no leadership, people, you know, they, they tend to fall back on what they're familiar with and do what they know. Mm -hmm. So if we want there to be innovation, this is where leaders need to make that a priority and then establish ongoing practices mm -hmm. that, uh, that, that are, you know, part of uh, uh, supporting and creating that kind of innovation. And you see that with the, you know, the most successful companies, you know, with the Googles, with the Apples, they don't wait until there's a crisis before they innovate. Mm -hmm. They're constantly looking ahead and constantly looking for what can we do different? What can we do better? So I, I think it's that, again, this, combination of two things, um, leadership, but also then establishing, you know, processes and practices within mm -hmm. that company that are going to lead to an, a sustaining and ongoing support of that. Alors Robert dit que euh, les entreprises qui, qui réussissent n'attendent pas euh, que ces situations euh, surviennent. Elles sont dans une culture de, de l'innovation et elles, elles encouragent euh, cette, cette recherche permanente à la fois par une posture de leader qui lui-même incarne euh, cette posture-là et en même temps qui en fait une priorité. Euh, C'est-à-dire que ça fait partie de ses pratiques et il instaure au sein de ses équipes des pratiques qui vont renforcer euh, la culture de l'innovation, la, de la culture de la créativité pour encore une fois ne pas attendre que euh, les situations urgentes et dramatiques arrivent mais bien pour les anticiper. Comme on le voit chez Google, comme on le voit chez Apple, ils ont cette culture de l'anticipation et de l'innovation. Thank you. One other question is about confidence. Um, a leader wonder uh, how do you keep yourself confident when you are forced to part with some of your staff? Well, I mean, I, don't, I think there's an issue of confidence or there's an issue of, let's say, compassion. Uh, I mean, I think if, we're, if you're having to release staff, especially in these days because of, you know, crises and, and the economic, um, you know, uh, downturn and challenges, it's, it's part of, of what we have to do. And to me, To me, then there's there's a compassion of feeling for the people that you are having to let go, and hopefully trying to prepare them as much as possible for them to you know be able to move forward and find find other work. But I think you know the the, the confidence side is you know uh, does this mean that you're you are a failure or that you're doing something wrong? And I think. This, this then relates to our, our sense of our own, you know, connection to our passion, our mission, our, our vision. Uh, you know, to, to me, it's always a sense of confidence about the future. Um, so I, I think maybe that's what this question is really asking about. Um, how do I stay confident in a future when it seems like the present is uncertain, is disrupted, you know, it's, uh, you know, not, not in a positive state. And I think this is where those inner qualities come in of our sense of, uh, in some ways, it's of courage, it's of, you know, commitment to 
what it is that we want to be bringing through our business into the world and to our customers. Uh, so, uh, and, and uh, then I think there's also a whole issue of self-confidence and self-confidence comes from, you know, my belief in myself um, that, that, you know, I am doing the best that I can in these circumstances and that, sometimes it's necessary in order to keep this larger the larger mission alive that i'm going to have to reduce staff it's not an easy decision but it's a it's a necessary decision okay so ce que dit robert c'est que l'enjeu il n'y a pas seulement un enjeu de confiance dans ce contexte où on doit se séparer de de collaborateurs c'est aussi un un, un enjeu de, de compassion et, et, et ces, deux, ces deux dimensions cohabitent dans ces décisions qui sont de toute façon difficiles. Euh, L'enjeu en matière de compassion, c'est évidemment d'accompagner les personnes dont on doit se séparer le mieux possible et les accompagner dans le sens de les aider vers la prochaine étape de leur, de leur développement, de leur prochaine étape après euh, le passage dans cette équipe ou dans cette entreprise. La deuxième dimension, c'est est-ce que ça signifie que c'est un échec pour soi euh, en, tant que, en, tant que, euh, en tant que responsable, en tant que leader Et Robert dit l'enjeu, en, c'est d'abord d'être connecté à, à sa passion, à son ambition, à pourquoi on, fait, euh, on, on est ce, ce leader-là. Euh, parce qu'au fond, euh, on fait du mieux qu'on peut avec les circonstances qui sont, euh, qui sont, euh, qui sont là. Surtout que euh, une, un, un, un recadrage que Robert euh, propose, c'est de dire que finalement, euh, de pouvoir euh, continuer la mission de l'entreprise et qui, que ce, cette mission puisse continuer à s'accomplir, passe malheureusement par euh, euh, se séparer de certains collaborateurs, mais c'est aussi au service d'une mission pour qu'elle puisse continuer pour d'autres. Et euh, ça, c'est aussi un enjeu. Et enfin, la dernière chose que Robert décrit, c'est aussi... Euh, L'enjeu, c'est comment rester confiant dans le futur, euh, c'est-à-dire comment euh, finalement travailler les qualités de cette confiance dans le futur qui nous permettent bah, de garder le cap, même si c'est difficile et que cette décision est de toute façon difficile. Thank you, Jean-François. And a third question is about urgency. How to resist the urgency of everyday life when we know that we must take the time to do otherwise, that the current system is not sustainable? How can we do? Yeah, I mean, well, this is always one of the big challenges because uh, it's short term versus long term uh, awareness. Uh, mm. And when we just look to the short term and we just look to only the immediate goals and the immediate rewards and, you know, um, you know, the, the, the immediate results, that's always a trap. Uh, and it's a trap generally because things are changing and, uh, there, there, we, we need to be able to look at, you know, the, the long-term trends. One of the things that we say is that we have to look at the, the weak signals as well as the strong signals. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, uh, they, they, they say, and, and one of the tools that we actually use in, in our um, conscious leadership work is, you know, you have these two dimensions, what's urgent and what's important. Mm -hmm. Now, there are some things that are urgent and important. Uh, and, and those are usually about 20% of the things that we do. And that's, you know, it's significant to take care of them because they are urgent and important. There are other things that are, they're not urgent and they're not important. And usually people go, okay, well, I can put that off and that's okay. Um, that where we get off and get trapped is there's something that's urgent, but it's not important, right? It's not important for that future. Um, and, and the other place we get trapped is for those things that are not urgent, but they are important for the future. And we see this happening right now in a lot of our world. Uh, we see it with climate change. We see it with many of the other challenges that we're facing. Um, there are longer term consequences that are coming that right now are not yet a crisis, but they will be if we do not start taking action. Uh, 
So it involves our ability to, you know, to, to first, you know, be aware, to know that we do have to take steps to create a sustainable future and that we need to make that a priority. Now, again, that's where leadership comes in. That's where this notion of practices comes in. It's, it, we need to make it a habit, a habit to, to be considering sustainability and not just the habit to only take care of those immediate urgent issues. Donc Robert, Robert revient sur l'importance euh, d'avoir de, de, une, une vision, d'équilibrer la vision long terme et la vision court terme. Et c'est toujours un challenge. Euh, c'est toujours un challenge de, 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 se, de s'extraire des bénéfices à court terme, des plaisirs à court terme que ça peut apporter. Et, et c'est important en tant que leader d'être attentif aux, aux grandes tendances, d'être attentif aux signaux faibles parce qu'ils vont, ils vont nous indiquer ce qui risque d'arriver si on, si on ne, ne développe pas cette conscience du long terme, cette conscience plus, plus, la, plus large. Et pour ça, il nous rappelle l'importance de bien différencier ce qui est urgent et euh, ce qui est important, ce qui est non urgent et ce qui est non important et qu'on peut laisser, ce qui est urgent et non important pour le, le futur et ce qui est urgent et important pour le, et important pour le futur. Et, Aujourd'hui, il y a des urgences qui sont importantes et c'est là où les disciplines du leader, euh, même si les, les conséquences ne sont pas toutes visibles, euh, les disciplines du leader sont vraiment nécessaires euh, parce que euh, si on ne les fait pas, si on ne les met pas en place, eh bien, il y a des conséquences qui vont, euh, qui vont arriver. Et ça, ça vient aussi s'ajouter à la notion de, de mettre des, des priorités euh, à, ses, à ses habitudes pour que, encore une fois, le, la, le leadership soit une, une discipline qui prenne en compte euh, la, la dimension long terme. Thank you, Jean-François. And there is a link with the next, next question. How to deal with the ambiguity of what a perfect leader should look like and who he is? Well, for me, uh, that's, that's not an ambiguity. <laughs> you, you always should look like you are. And, and I think that's what a truly conscious leader is. There, there is no uh, disconnect between um, your, how you look and who you are. Mm -hmm. I think when people try to do that, they try to put on an image, they try to pretend, they try to act. That's already creates a big problem. And, and is, it's not... Uh, um, There's, there's a misalignment. You're already starting from a place of misalignment. So now, again, you're always needing to deal with the people's expectations about what somebody should do or what they should look like. However, my experience is that, you know, your own personal congruence is probably one of your, your uh, you know, greatest um, Uh, places or foundations for for charisma. There's what you call charisma as, as a as a leader, and that charisma does not come from pretending like you're something that you're not. You know, charisma only comes from being in complete connection with who you are, and and then that's the type of leader you should be. You know, mm -hmm. and I think uh, it's. It, Then, then it's not a matter of, of looks, it, it, then it's a matter of your level of passion, your level of vision, your, you know, your degree of ambition. And, and those are, are, are more qualities that we can develop. They're not so much about your, just your personality or your identity. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Donc, ce que Robert yeah. dit, c'est que euh, cette idée que, euh, et je suis, je vois bien cette, cette différence entre ce qu'un leader doit être et ce qu'il est. Finalement, il n'y a pas de différence pour Robert. Euh, un, un leader doit toujours être ce qu'il est. Euh, L'enjeu, euh, sinon, ça crée une déconnexion entre euh, qui il est et ce qu'il montre. Et c'est plus une façon de répondre à une image que les autres attendent de lui. Et cette, euh, cette déconnexion euh, engendre, euh, pour le coup, un, une incongruence qui est à l'opposé du charisme. Pour Robert, le, le charisme, c'est la capacité à être totalement congruent, congruent avec sa passion, congruent avec sa vision, congruent avec son ambition. Euh, et c'est là où on est véritablement euh, qui on est et qu'on donne le meilleur de soi en tant que leader. 
Mm. Mm. Thank you. Okay. And sometimes um, leaders are on their on their hero's journey, yes. and um, maybe they they are lost. And uh, how can they deal with what they are just becoming, and with what other people are waiting for them? Well, you know, I think. Uh... When you're lost, there's two places to look. Uh, one is inside and one is outside. Uh, mm -hmm. And if you're lost on the outside, you need to look inside. If you're mm -hmm. lost on the inside, you need to look outside. And what I mean by that is, um, you know, uh, if, if, I, if I'm not sure if there's uncertainty around me and I don't know, uh, I can't see on the outside where to go, I have to come back to my own inner compass. So this means I need to connect to, to myself and my center. If I'm lost on the inside and I don't know that, then I need to look, I mean, this is the whole idea of a hero's journey. I need to look out for what, what is my calling? Who are my guardians? Um, uh, I mean, if we take this idea of, of a hero's journey, the, the key aspects are always, you know, what is, what is this situation calling from me? Even if I'm lost, even if I'm uncertain, even if I don't know what's happening, that's as much of a hero's journey as anything else. And the question is, what is that calling for me to be able to do or to become more? Maybe it's calling me to come in more strongly to what's true for me and to know my values uh, even more strongly. Sometimes it's calling me to look out and, and say, what are the opportunities? What, you know, what is the call to adventure that is there for me now? Um, maybe sometimes it's, a, it's just a call to, to, to be, be still and to wait uh, you know, for something to emerge. I've been in all of those situations. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and again, um, it's, I, I think that the, the the basic aspect of that, of, of every hero's journey is, it always starts from a sense of connection with, with your authentic self and what's, what's important for you to take a stand for. Alors, ce que, ce que, ce que Robert décrit, c'est que euh, on peut être perdu et, et, et quand on est perdu, il y a deux endroits à regarder, c'est euh, à l'extérieur et, et à l'intérieur. Et Robert précise que quand vous êtes perdu à, à, à l'intérieur, bien regardez à l'extérieur. Et si vous êtes perdu à l'extérieur, regardez à l'intérieur, ce qui nous renvoie à la voie du héros. La voie du héros qui va voir à la fois à l'extérieur et à l'intérieur, à l'extérieur avec qui sont mes gardiens, qui sont mes alliés, quelles sont les, les, les ressources extérieures sur lesquelles je peux m'appuyer. Et puis regarder à l'intérieur, c'est aussi s'interroger sur quelles sont mes valeurs Qu'est-ce qui est vrai pour moi Qui suis-je En répondant à cette question, c'est aussi la question de qu'est-ce que cette situation appelle de moi Comment elle m'appelle à, à, à m'actualiser d'une certaine manière euh, Et parfois, une autre façon de, de gérer la façon d'être perdu, bah, c'est de rester calme et d'attendre que quelque chose veuille bien émerger. Et Robert dit qu'il il a vécu toutes ces positions Regarder à l'extérieur, regarder à l'intérieur parce qu'en en étant, en étant perdu. Et, et il rappelle que la voix du héros commence toujours avec ce, cette capacité à se rappeler qui on est euh, au fond. Thank you. And don't you think there is something very special nowadays? Um, if we are lost inside and in these times where outside it's very uncertain. <laughs> How can we do? <laughs> well, if you mean you're meeting, if you're meeting inner uncertainty with outer uncertainty, of course, that's going to be very confusing. So mm. what you have to do is to become congruent in yourself. You have to learn how to find your center. And, and maybe it has to start with, with just something simple and physical. Um, and this is one of the things I, I think that's important that Um, from from uh, a conscious leadership perspective, it's one of the reasons that we emphasize multiple intelligences and particularly somatic intelligence. 
because when we say we're lost on the inside, inside is, is a whole world in itself. You know, you have a, a left brain cognitive world. I can be cognitively lost and, and uncertain because I don't know what's going to happen in the future. But, but I can be very grounded in my body and in myself. So I think um, this is where also having what we would call uh, practices are important. Um, uh, daily practices, things where you are really coming back to this place of, of, of centeredness and certainty in yourself each day. Um, this is what every, every great leader does. Every, all great leaders are constantly having to deal with uncertainty and change, change in the world, change in themselves, change in, you know, um, in, in everything that's happening. So we have to find that, that first place of stability um, within. And like I say, if, if I can't find it in my mind because I'm in analysis paralysis, then I have to come into, into the body. Um, so, I mean, that, that's, that's what I do. You know, I have my, my practices that are, that are grounding me each day and reminding me of who I am and, you know, what's important in my life. Alors, ce que, ce que Robert décrit dans, cette, dans ce contexte incertain et, et, et dans cet univers complexe, c'est que si on est dans une confusion intérieure et que cette confusion intérieure rencontre une confusion extérieure, eh bien, ça va être encore plus difficile. Ça va être encore plus difficile, d'où l'importance pour Robert, de, de revenir au-delà de notre inquiétude et de notre analyse paralysante, de, de revenir à notre corps, de revenir à cette intelligence somatique qu'il pratique quotidiennement pour euh, équilibrer notre cerveau gauche qui, lui, veut maîtriser les choses et d'avoir des rituels, de revenir à, à son centre comme rituel, par exemple, pour trouver ce sens, cette, cette expérience de la stabilité et que cette stabilité vienne de l'intérieur dans un environnement qui, lui, est mouvant. Et c'est ce que font tous les leaders qui sont face à l'incertitude, qui sont face à la complexité, c'est qu'ils ont cette capacité à revenir à une certaine stabilité intérieure pour ne pas être emportés par le mouvement extérieur. Thank you, Jean-François. And maybe a last question. What role plays ethics in leadership? Well, it's really, ethics has a central place in leadership, obviously. Uh, probably the greatest damage in the world to people has been done by unethical leaders. I mean, that seems obvious. Um, but, but ethics is complicated, obviously, because, um, you know, ethics is a, it's a function of how we think about things um, and what can seem ethical to somebody might be unethical to somebody else. And that's where it's important to have a, a common uh, understanding and a common strategy for ethics. Um, uh, you know, uh, this is where one of the key concepts in conscious leadership is that about whole on and that conscious leaders care for the whole on. Generally, unethical behavior comes when we are simply benefiting one part of the whole to the disadvantage of others. That's generally what's considered unethical. You know, it's somebody wins at, at the expense of, of others who are losing in order for them to win. Um, and so an ethical leader is somebody who is really trying to create as, as strong of a, or as, or as uh, wide of a, you know, a win as possible. And this is complicated because it requires looking at things from multiple perspectives and multiple timelines. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, then th there's also a whole issue of, of priorities. Um, and, and where do we put the, I mean, eth ethics often relates to priorities. Wh what is most important in terms of what you're trying to accomplish? <laughs> I was watching very interesting uh, show that I, uh, last night uh, that I heard about from about five people in one day, and it's called The Social Dilemma. 
it's on Netflix. Mm -hmm. And it's all about how social media and things like Google are, have, have you know, not, not intentionally, but because they set up their whole business models to, you know, uh, maximize their profit, mm -hmm. they're, you know, a, a lot of what's happening on social media where they're selling uh, information about people, where they're constantly get trying to get people to, you know, s stay addicted to something. Mm -hmm. These are ethical issues that that it was not something that the founders themselves even were thinking of in the beginning because they didn't even realize how pervasive or how effective these algorithms can be. So, you know, we can't always predict, but then I think another big part of ethics is accountability that once we recognize these things, then we need to take steps to, to, to correct them, to make a difference and not to go into denial or blame of others. So it's a, I mean, obviously it's a big subject, but the, the simple answer to your question is that, um, you know, eth ethics is central to all leadership. Uh, if you don't have it, uh, you create disasters. Hmm. Alors Robert dit sur l'importance de l'éthique dans, dans le leadership qu'elle euh, elle joue un rôle central euh, et qu'en même temps l'éthique n'est pas une, une réponse évidente parce que l'éthique pose des questions parce que c'est une question de perspective et de perspective multiple sur un sujet et de priorité qu'il faut euh, identifier par rapport à un sujet parce que l'éthique suppose de se demander à quoi je donne la priorité dans la décision éthique que je vais prendre et pour lui, euh, le concept de Holon qu'on verra dans le programme, euh, c'est la capacité à prendre en compte le plus de perspectives possibles pour euh, intégrer une relation gagnant-gagnant avec le plus de parties prenantes du système auquel on s'adresse, de façon à ce que tout le monde gagne et que euh, non pas que certains gagnent et que d'autres perdent. Et pour lui, euh, un, un leader conscient, c'est euh, cette capacité à prendre en compte différentes perspectives en matière d'éthique, en matière d'histoire euh, aussi, du temps, euh, des, du passé, hein, du futur. Et euh, Robert rappelle ce, 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 ce qui est en train de, de, de passer sur Netflix en ce moment, qui s'appelle le, le, le film « Le dilemme social » et qui rappelle comment euh, aujourd'hui certains sur les réseaux sociaux on, on cherchent à maximiser leurs profits, donc à, à finalement euh, avoir une vision du holon un peu euh, centrée sur eux et ont la volonté peut-être de rendre les gens dépendants et comment ces algorithmes sont devenus finalement ont dépassé les fondateurs qui n'avaient pas du tout cette intention euh, au départ quand ils ont lancé euh, tous, ces, tous ces mouvements. Donc l'éthique euh, c'est vraiment euh, derrière ça la capacité à être responsable et à ne pas culpabiliser ou accuser les autres mais à se positionner comme responsable euh, et euh, une responsabilité entre guillemets euh, redevable c'est essentiel thank you Jean-François <laughs> so we are now at the end of this live um, maybe you can join us if you have some of those questions also for the organization we hope to see you in two weeks now in the south yes. oh, yeah. this so. is This is a good time to, to let us know that if you're, you're planning to come because uh, we want to be able to, to welcome you there. Yes, and the training is both online and live and we hope to be live. Uh, and even if it's uncertain, the online part will uh, take place. You can enroll, you can join us. And um, maybe do I forget something, Jean-François or Robert? Um, no, it's okay. <laughs> Just looking forward to seeing you there. And um, um, I hope we, we can really uh, create that um, aligned, charismatic leader just as you are. <laughs> well, I, and I, I think this is probably, you know, one of the, the most important things that we need today. I think if you look around the world, not only at the challenges that we have to deal with, but a lot of what has created those challenges. Mm. It's the need for conscious leadership. And not, I mean, not, not just for the big things, but, but for, for our lives, you know, for everything that we do. 
Um, and so that's why I think this program is probably one the, the most important program that you could attend this year. Uh, it's, it's, you know, exactly what we need. And we, we have really been putting this together with that in mind that we want to provide those who come with the, the tools that they you know, would most need in order not only to just get through these challenges, but to help be you know, creating where we're going to be living next <laughs> and hopefully make it better. Yeah, better. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Robert, for your time. Oh yeah, thank for you. For your uh, wisdom sharing with us. That's, uh, that's awesome. <laughs> and see you soon. <laughs> See you soon, everybody. Bye -bye. See you all soon. Bye-bye.